windows crusted with dry summer's flake and a lonely fly. All a screen ignored by the viewer who, though facing it, stares and stares straight throughout his silence. He sits cross-legged on a low wooden chair with backrest softened by green towels. The close horizon is pale and blue, misty in the late afternoon sun that is bright and hidden in the white aqua sky. A river and sea, islanding the close region of Sheppey, is the base of the mist's drift that rises gently and still like it's a skill. Mostly sky, the canvas is supported by strips of low bumpy ground in light greens and yellows. Few runs of trees like elongated buildings and wonky fencing. There is a knock on the door. He slowly rises and opens it, rolling his eyes. To his surprise, no one is there. He glances up and down the landing quickly and returns into the small room. A thin, gangly bed runs from the door to the window of the cell, tightly wrapped in a fire blanket with a hard white pillow. It looks like a hospital bed. The rest of the confine is cramped, with a spindly table, a small cupboard and a child-sized wardrobe. An illusion. The window appears clear now, and the sky a rich, definitive biro purple. The light in the room is deceptively dull, as villain has hung a pale green sheet from crooked runners, soothing the harsh electric white that blares from the plastic-sized case. Blue smoke from the reflection turns in on itself, and his fingers, held in tobacco mould that's our hand again, lazily in pose, tweeze of the roll-up's roach. He breaks wind and flicks ash into an orange peel. The light room, with its white-painted stone brick walls suddenly shaking, almost upside down with a sudden harsh gunfire of crashing, smashing and deranged howling and screaming. An alarm sounds. Villain increases, unfolds himself, tumbles off the bed into plain black shoes and opens the door. Immediately, he collides with a red-faced screw, who kicks him back into his cell, slams the door and locks it. Millions of thoughts pass in seconds and the door opens angrily. Two screws burst in and beat Villain to the floor and handcuffs are on. Do you hear me, you handsome rat, faced dog? I'm telling you a story. We read the beginning. Villain doesn't hear you. He hears Neil on the landing. The money's in the bank. I ain't saying which one. This is exactly what Villain thinks of it all, but there is no one to say it aloud to. The money's in the bank. He thinks precisely. He needs his new kid. Outside the open door, an old fellow walks by with a cup of tea and says to another, Bloke, gonna be doing the dairy tomorrow, milking the fucking pigs. Might take me a while, but trust me, the money's there. One of the screws from the security room walks in a very odd way, all knees, comes in. Evening, villain. He searches through the bottom drawer of a decrepit old cupboard. He pulls out a white box, and from the white box he pulls out an asthma pump. Pulls out a ribbon, as Arcadian or as unravelling, and tumbles into his palm, Joey's of brown and whites. In three balls, waterproof shots of blue and white, Tesco-style miniature bowling balls looking for a knockdown on the skittles of oblivion. You get me, blood, says Neil. Mr. Welks raised an eyebrow and turns to villain. Got asthma, have you, son? The curtain was calling as the sun set on another shore. The bad boys were brawling. If you want it so bad, you can have it all. I defy you all. 
This blood clot weirdo knows twice as much as nothing at all. It's still nothing at all. And my blood knows the wolfman twice as much as ten lives, you all. Slack back razor days and night time, we're filling mad halls. They kill you, then they bill you. Then they old bill you, snouched in the swill, yo. We remember the face and we'll do you. And then we... Rude boy, what do you want, bruv? Brown. You want to sell some brown for me? He gave me that. Pay me when you sell it. I returned to my cell and sat on the bed and opened it. Pulled out a joey of H. The size of a ping pong ball. In a ping pong ball. I forged him a charitable no questions asked check that gave his girlfriend the cash on the Monday. Good kid. He clicked his white teeth. Anyone for table tennis? What ho? You're a thief, you. Look it up, he said, nodding his head at the bed, covered in scraps of paper and books. Distant, cloudy voices clutter up the walls with muttered, spoiling choices and opinions on us all. But come the revolution, we'll line them up against the wall. Then, lads, steady. Bop goes the weasel. Half a pound of tuppenny rice, half a pound of treacle. That's the way the money goes. Pop goes the weasel. Half a pound of tuppenny rice, half a pound of treacle. That's the way the money goes. Pop goes the weasel. You get people who are gormless, you get me? Different bitches. Consume them. Their soul haven't had enough time. Their environment and the focus of their parents. The true essence of life. We, we live in a society that has been predoctrinated. I've been expecting you, the fortune teller said to Neil. I've been in states where I can control the forces of nature. Set out to the next dark side, thinking something's in my mind. God bless the dead. Deep underworld and procedure since the beginning of time. It's not what they say, it's the way they say it. Codes in the underworld. Don't tell me to fuck off real nature. Drawing, figure asleep on a bed, a la death of merit. Radio slave, miserable as virtue, the celebrity grip, friend of a great musician on the set of a blockbuster movie. The walls entertained, unbeknown by none known, the new turn of the decent or half-decent sort of chap she pretended not to know. Now, now. Prefer, poor cow. I'll not take what I can get, chain whipped and dead rollicking. I'll do the time and perfect the crime. There's a man who came to stay. The boy he replaced disappeared without a trace. Gave my songs and my soul away. No one would say what they needed to say. So, he had his way. If you sail into the sun, beware the eyes of green. And if the whole world say that you are the one, I defy you to believe them, my son. Drawing, outline of merit, Chatterton. Would you believe them, my son? Once upon a time in the land of Bruce Grove, Tottenham, there lived in an Arcadian P. 
Peabody Cottage, Peter, Francesca, Steve, and assorted nymphs, pixies, and French psychedelic hippies scattered about. EastEnders, Martin and G, motorbike fellows, and fine dealers lived very close by, and regular trips were made behind their hedge and iron gate barricade into sometimes twisted realms. A bush to get out of sometimes, as Trigger said of the moons. Nevertheless, special times occurred there as much, as much as spooky ones. Back in Peabody, the opera collage painted floorboards and walls and bongos, bedspreads and books abounded in this bedlam of a love nest. Remember a young girl from North London with a beehive and leather jacket called Hannah? Always drunk in those days. And everyone was off their nut on speed. I remember walking from Bruce Grove to Bow and back with Steve one fine night to visit the venerable Phil Dickens on the top floor of Levy House. What did we talk of? I remember we was wearing tatty jeans and Lord Anthony style affairs on our backs. To Arcady, Bedlam, my good man, and don't spare the clapped-out old banger bought off Johnny's Uncle Ernie. Doodles. Remember that horrible night in Ironham Road? What one? The one when Wolfie lost it. He mocked me. Something rotten. Saying... Bring me a mirror, oh, bring me a mirror. How is your vanity, Peter? With short hair, you are ugly, it appears, and you do not seem so rash these days. Mind you, no girls to dress up for in here. Saying that, I've been brushing my teeth and looking after myself in a routine rather than a vanity way, much more diligently than on the outside. For when I get outside, oh, I suppose so. It's hard to imagine what I really mean. I'm pleased with my sight when I behold the friend, but my vision and the friend cannot be two. It is he who sees with my eyes. Wearily tiring me, Lay back and took the knee idly to a dollar tree. I look God in the eye, cawing and crowing of swooping birds, means high-pitched screeches near lowland estuary beaches by the window bars. A pale man reaches to God with both hands. Can it be true that you, after so long you're strolling into view, I've missed you. But you know I can be stoical and struggle on with lost limbs aplenty. All these things you see are just what they seem to be. Waves of nausea hideously and divine tricksters melancholy. Slaves to the system are we. And an inkling of the mechanical rhythm is enough to stir the heart that heeds the red hand that stirs the tea. I wander early in the rainy shroud, round and about the prison grounds. Low wooden ferries in this open cell of rabbit fields and sprawling willows, reeling backwards in the wind for summer. Gone are the days, gone are the days. I tread lightly, Longed to hide behind the run of bushes from the tempter, tempting the unfree to embark upon the hike. You boy, you could be in London tonight. In the land of the gouching, shining sun, there's bodies in a room, lads. 
Where never an honest day's work is done, they call it the tombland. In the land of the gouching, shining sun, there's hordes in a wicked womb, man. Nary an honest day's work is done, done in the tombland, down in the tombland, and we're never going home. No, we're never going home. On the Isle of Sheppy, Eppy, 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 I, I, yo. Ian is not really a Mormon, but he says he is. I can't remember why now, but some prison perk was involved. Conditioned feelings. They can't cut it without you. Man, army, puke your ring up, a flourish of vomit. Kilimanjaro, now, now the lost chance has been and gone, and you know you're going to have to run if you want to survive. Question. Have you ever had opium? Yeah. And did you have wild visions? He stretches. Frowns. No, just gouched. Pisses. Grim, earthly silence in the prisoner's mourning. Already am I mourning with a perverse glee the death of these next few days before my release. And sorrow holds it, sin and shame to draw the deepest measure from the cords. Warps, mirror of my melody. Differing shapes of the face that gazes nearly upon itself. But Peter, you know what you're going to do with a prison lighter, prison asthma pump and gate money upon release. I am untidy and romantic, stapled to this fate. Lily Langtry to Oscar Wilde. Don't tell Frank. You must forgive me, for I cannot forgive myself. And time, she stoops to conquer the lot. Conspicuous is my homage to the bard of St. Helena. He lay here too in less enlightened times. Dad and Wolfie. Dead in dreams, money and cars. Me and the three despicable who cornered me in a cell and made to have their way till I a suddenly awakened to the horror in a paler night afore the down of this release. No rest is assured, thoughts devoted to discomfort. That which establishes itself again like a tall monument in the flood of ideas about these conditions. But are they any different out there? Somehow I am stronger here. I ain't had a lick of a crack pipe in 28 days, which is, of course, something approaching miraculous. I'm not as obsessed with this matter as some, but deem it still... In this stillness, amidst panic and mayhem of realities, worthy of noting, perhaps for the point of future excess. Honestly, who knows what awaits me, and who cares? I'm more concerned with that which I await. At thy martyrdom, the greedy and the cruel crowd to which thou speakest will assemble, all will come to see thee on thy cross, and not one will have pity on thee. Plastic plate and bowl. 
one drum and four paces stroll, the cell, the peter hole, and down the landing roll for a ladle full of gruel. Bathroom racers turned out to be Mrs. T and some young courtship sharp dressed, smoking a blunt. I was in the bath, nearly. A spider package, elegant water bottle and three fishes. A modern supermarket. Idea about novelty eating themed on the ancient Roman world. Arose that, my dear father, again. And the grand mood. And Nadine? Jan was there, too, getting dressed. And some corny advert about a man on a lilo in a pool atop a roof. Sell means Peter Sellers. <clears throat> Hope. One can still hope. As hope hops in still over balcony railings, landing on metal rope blankets, presumably there to prevent death, to prevent the death of hope. It hops on. Limping slightly now across rice-flecked hot plates, through cracks in the atmosphere and across the exercise yard, back across the fence and away back to all London where it came from. It didn't even pop in for five minutes, but still I hope. I'll wait for thee, hope. I'll eat the stale bread. Days pass. What good can it do, the impatient, hungry wretch? Soul shallow-fed to fool by clippings, but greedy belly so empty it's eating itself up. Suited body lumped together but under a rattling brain. Metallic fever and lazy emotions stalling in the heat, sprawling on the wooden seat, revelling in everyone's discomfort, sore-backed and sour. There may be some trouble this hour, like, like each and every hour before it. This is no house of correction. This is the hostile house of justified injustice, the house of boredom, the cottage of crippled lives. Those caught, stitched up, unlucky, violent, criminally insane, thugs, hard men, faces... All London's pockets emptied out and searched and banged up. I'm lost in these hours, never given no release date, but I'm sure it must be. It has to be. Tea time! Through the dingy filth and the dirty smudge of the barred window, the immediate ruins of a prison church, E-wing, exercise yard, barbed wires, all Wandsworth's browns and red bricks, slight greys and tinny blues, and then the mournful sky so pale and dry, shepherding the last clouds to the safety of the night. Good to her own, like Diablo. The sharpened claws of the night shadows across the filthy glass of the night, darkly drawing in the shires. A train is too loud, pretend thunder. A wind whips up the struggles of torn prison linen. A long, lazy day, short of breath, closer now to the final returns, the release, the jest of death. Free I am. A, a slave until tomorrow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write Jenny a long letter. I always write her a letter when I've had a bit of gear. He looks at his pupils in the mirror. I don't feel like I've had any. I've got a manky taste in my mouth. The gear was cut. The Born Identity, Robert Ludlam. You pick up one of those books, you, you aren't going to put it down. Stealing from a thief was I, that day in Harley Street. Booting down a door and strolling off through the rain. 
they never mentioned in court, in the press, that the only object I truly, completely, single-mindedly stole, not trust, not friendship, a Burberry umbrella. A melody always finds me, the Chat Noir. In the fabric of night, the conquest of time, to awakening delight, dreams deflect from the crime. Of corruption and embittered gratitude towards injustice, I will to the cells of my sleep, wherein walls weep with blood and webs tighten the shroud to my skull. The black cat of my myth encourages hope like lucklust, stringy blankets for a cover and an armed robber for a bunk bed mate. Good night again, Peter, my love, sweet boy. William Brown of the Mirror. I never saw such an amazing sight involving my senses as when Will took took the square plate of mirrored glass and held it out of the cell window this one cold Saturday night. The pink neon of the Wandsworth wasteland and brick and aluminium all before and below and around in the flattened view by the derelict churches I stood on a chair and looked over his shoulder to behold a grid in the shape of the small looking glass. The flickering image of the whole prison wing, a blaze of brown stone etched into the night, serried sills, rank sills, ranks of cell windows, seemingly immovable, an implacable monument of stone. Villain reruns helplessly haplessly, though not without some hope, to bung the chilly draught of injustice. Villain waits in his time, a slow Sunday stands asleep, solemnly in the way of the awakening me of his needs. Is it fireworks or gun shops that pop somewhere over the barbed wire? He doesn't care, straining to interpret the banging and bloop bloops and busying of the guards and cons on the landings, each rattling of keys a testimony to the hunger of... Villain, where's my grub? Monday the 8th, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday... Day after day after day. I, wherefore art thou? Hold your horses, villain. You've got two more nights in Wandsworth. What is the incarceration of a vain individual if it enable an immortal word to blossom and to create, in Keats's words, an eternal source of ecstasy? This is all part of the long struggle towards the purest ideal, Mr. S. Melmoth. Bilo and Biggles go together like a cup. Oh, Gray and Giggles. The white light is divided into a thousand or many more screens while light through a dark green blanket, muffling the cell of draught. How warm, green, we lay on our bunks, drifting in and out of dreams and rattles and longed-for release and also to leave the place, though that remains a different matter. I ask for details. Less disinterest it would be hard to imagine in the sarcastic faces and the cheery voices of the guards, all the guards. It pinches the goodness from the soul they give not an inch, nor a toss, for villains' polite request, for villains' simple rights, tasks avoided. I am compounded and confounded and frustrated, complicated, boiling under the oily, sandy skin.
the revolt of the puppets. Returns vite le vous. What awaits villain at the gate? A return to the life negated? Plating voices and prying eyes, mistaking the impossible truth for lies, and autumn leaves, languorous parks and ponds and pals. Once Upon a Time by Joan Robinson There was a sailor bound for service. Choice was took. Away. So the sailor, he deserted. He had something to say. Once there was a time when this word would never be, but we will all agree that this is not that time. There was a rumour that a father had no time of day, so the father lost his bearings. The children heard him say, Once there was a time. There was a driver went for shelter, had nowhere to say. So the driver ran for cover. They took his name away. Once there was a time, deserted, he had something to say. Once there was a time when this would never be. But we would all agree that this is not that time. One to see rise, silences, cornflakes, prison, breakfast. The prison system is terrible, that it hardens the hearts, whose hearts it does not break and brutalises those who have to carry it out, no less than those who have to submit to it. Wormwood over blokery. Last CE30. Guilty, let those who know not what a thing temptation is. Let those who have not walked as we have done in the red fire of passion, those whose lives are dull and colourless in a word, let those, if any such there be, who have not loved, cast stones against you.